to load up. We'll be talking about robotic surgery today, but robotic, um, robotic proctectomy and actually going beyond TME as we think about advanced disease. I think this is one of the true advantages of the additional technical facility that the device offers for us and perhaps may uh, provide some answers to the questions regarding the additional costs of the device as an example. So hopefully the slides will come up. Okay, great. My disclosures, great. So whenever we, we talk about uh, rectal surgery, particularly when we talk about advanced rectal surgery, I think we have to refocus on the surgical principles. It's important to have a thorough preoperative evaluation. We've heard about that today. That includes a clinical examination, radiographic evaluation. We have to have our multidisciplinary treatment strategies uh, that include neoadjuvant therapy, that may include induction chemotherapy, particularly for the advanced disease. We have to clearly delineate and understand the anatomy, and then we have to ensure oncologic appropriateness. There are no intrinsic contraindications to minimally invasive approaches to complex disease. The robotic interface, however, can improve access and technical capacity for extended resections. While there have been case reports of robotic multivisceral resection, mostly these are anterior exonerations for GYN indications, um, and certainly I think we will continue to hear more about uh, application of the technology in other settings. And, and certainly there's growing experience within the lateral compartment as an example, and we'll show some of that today. Here are some examples of the type of scenarios you can see here. Uh, this is a locally advanced tumor with involvement of the anterior peritoneal reflection. And in fact, this is a um, tumor that extends beyond. You can see tethering of the peritoneum overlying the seminal vesicle uh, in this mid-rectal cancer. We have tumors such as this with extension, finger-like extension onto the prostate gland. Um, and tumors that um, have lateral lymph node involvement, such as you can see the left obturator compartment has complex nodal chain. Um, and we can also see here bilateral internal iliac disease, all of which can be managed in a minimally invasive fashion as long as we pay attention to those principles. So I'd like to present one case. This is a vaginal involvement. You can clearly see in the left upper panel, it's an anterior rectal tumor with obliteration of the rectovaginal space, in fact, involvement of the posterior wall of the vagina. You can see that a little bit better on some of the other cuts. Um, and you can see here uh, that extension. And here's another case. This is a patient who has a very distal um, anterior anal cancer. In fact, this is an anal adenocarcinoma it presented with a fistula um, as her initial presentation, but there was tumor extending along the posterior fornix of the vagina, clearly a patient who needs a posterior vaginectomy.